On May 29, 1999, a woman in Chattanooga, Tennessee, was clearing weeds in her backyard when she discovered a human skull. In the days that followed, police located a matching skeleton in the woods of a place nearby called Billy Goat Hill. The remains were identified as a woman named Vicki Hollingsworth, a young lady who had been considered missing and now was considered murdered. So this case is 16 and a half years old. Yeah. This is the first one we have where the body was found a while afterwards. Normally you start a case with a body, a weapon, but here all we have are bones. So our crime scenes are going to be crucial in tying back the murder to her killer. We need to sit down and figure out specific minutes of that morning when it all could have happened. For years, the victim's family has searched and questioned. I knew I had to find my sister. And now with the help of experienced investigators Orlando Martinez and Steve Spingola, we're going to track down every last witness to try and get some answers. That's so. She said, I'm scared to death. She didn't deserve to be dead. Vicki being murdered caused their mother to lose hope, and she died never knowing for sure who killed her baby. She'll never know the outcome, but at least the rest of the family will. Let's hope so. It has been 16 years and still no answers. Police answer. consider her killing a cold case. Years later, the case is still unsolved. There are so many cold cases out there just waiting to be solved. The crime scene ultimately tells the story of the murder. We want to bring justice to these victims. Hi. Hi. Bill Phillips. Yolanda McClary, nice Hi, to meet you. Justin Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Nice to meet you. You know, when I opened my case file, um, there's a picture of Vicki there. And then when I look at photos of her children at that time, you know, they're like four and nine. They're stripped of a mother forever. So you were originally on the case. I was originally. So my biggest goal is for us to be able to solve this case and let Vicki's family know that there is some closure. Victoria or Vicki? I call her Vicki. Vicki. How old was she, guys? 28. I have thought a lot about the harshness of this case and that we still don't have resolution for it. I would love to put somebody in jail to see justice for murdering Vicki. What is the date of our murder? 8-18-97, or time of missing. And what is the date her body was recovered? 5-29 of 99? Yeah. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. She just started a new job, huh? Vicki had recently separated from her husband, LeBron Hollingsworth. When she left, she took with her two young children from a previous marriage, nine-year-old Wesley and four-year-old Kajora. Who ended up raising them? Their grandparents. After leaving LeBron, Vicki and her children moved into the home of Vicki's parents, who were out of town at the time of her disappearance. The day that Vicki went missing, Vicki's parents can't get in touch with her, so they call her brother, have him to go check. He goes over, finds out that her children have been left alone. His parents call the police and report it as they are traveling back from an out-of-town trip. So our missing persons unit work on this for, for several hours. They contact us, the homicide unit, and go, hey, uh, you guys might want to come get involved. Although Vicky's missing, her car is like it should be at mom and dad's house. And uh, at the same time, we realize there are some twigs stuck between the muffler and the frame of the car. According to the family, even though Vicki and LeBron had separated, she had agreed to pick him up every morning at 5 a.m. to take him to work. We talked to LeBron. LeBron says, Vicki didn't come pick me up this morning. He's not asking questions about her where everybody else is like, where's Vicki? He's not. This is your wife. Uh, you, you got a reporter missing. And he never talked to the kids after that, never actually went over and talked to Vicki's family. And he doesn't show any concern about her possibly being missing. In a case like Vicky's, the spouse is frequently the first suspect you look at. But with LeBron, there are a number of even more suspicious factors that make him our main suspect. What's the first thing y'all want to put under LeBron? Abusive husband. Vicky left him, couldn't deal with him anymore. 
There were rumors that Vicki had been seeing other people after they separated, and witnesses reported that he had actually been trying to win her back, making it even more suspicious that he showed absolutely no concern. He's never lawyered up, has he? I don't believe he has. He has refused to speak with us. We feel pretty good about LeBron Hollingsworth as our main suspect, but because the body wasn't found for over two years, crucial evidence was lost, and the former DA didn't think there was enough evidence to bring the charges. Neil, this is Hello, Kelly. Nice to Neil meet you. Nice Pleasure. to meet you. Even though we're working in a big city like Chattanooga, what's really cool this week is that the executive assistant district attorney, Neil Pinkston, is taking the time to meet with us and work with us. We're excited to have you here. We've never had a prosecutor I'm too. come so Thank soon. You. What's your take on circumstantial evidence cases. They're difficult, but we've tried a number of them where it's just as powerful as, Yay! and sometimes more powerful than direct evidence. Tell us the ground rules, what you would like for us to do, what you're hoping we can get accomplished. Neil is the person who's gonna be taking this case if it goes to trial. He knows what pieces of information he needs to secure a conviction when that day happens. The first thing that I was most interested in is whatever we can do to focus on who it appears circumstantially the main suspect is, and what it was about Vicky that made him kill her, and explain how he accomplished this. The other thing, at some point, there's gonna to have to be a practical way to explain certain time window that we're dealing with. And we gotta show uh, the concealment of the crime because that could eliminate the whole case if we weren't able to show that. The reason that we need to prove LeBron hid Vicky's body is that this crime could be a crime of passion, and in Tennessee, there's a 15-year statute of limitations on second-degree murder, which is murder without premeditation. So if LeBron killed Vicky in 97, it would be too late to charge him with second-degree murder, and he could walk free. But if we can show that LeBron was the one to conceal Vicky's body on Billy Goat Hill, that 15 years wouldn't start until the body was discovered in 1999, meaning that he could still be charged. That's very important. And that's exactly why Chattanooga PD asked for our help. We are heading out to see Vicki's family, including her children, Wesley and Kajora. Wesley? Yes. Hey, Bill Phillips. Hi. Hi, Wesley. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello, Kajora. Nice to meet you. Vicki's family have always suspected LeBron, and her children were old enough to even remember the day she went missing. My mom, she had a heart of gold. Love people. Um, very family oriented. She wasn't afraid to be different. She was fearless. Casey, you got a story to talk about your sister? Even from the age of 12 years old, we were more like Hansel and Gretel. You know, we grew up, she took care of me. When I didn't have any chance, she'd go to mom and dad and get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that she did wonderful, except she got in touch with a drug boy. He just didn't treat her right. The relationship between them, from what I experienced, was a, it was an abusive relationship. It was. Multiple times of seeing her getting hit, getting beat on. Right. That you saw with your own eyes. That I saw with my own eyes. Okay. I remember one night, they were tussling and fighting, and woke up and seen him actually pour gasoline on her face. Gas. Gasoline. On her face. On her face. What about growing up so young without your mom? For me, it's, it's been hard. It's been 16 years of being stripped of my mother at such a young age for what reason nobody can tell me. Jora, what about you, baby? It's just been hard as being a female growing up, not having a mother around, having to learn everything that I've learned on my own. I never get to like, do things with my mother, and it hurts me. I searched for my sister for three weeks straight, driving all around. I looked for my sister. That morning happened, I knew something was wrong. You know, like, you lost something, you know you gotta find it. And that's what I was doing. So. <laughs> Sooner or later, it's gonna come to a head and justice gonna happen with this man. That's right. You hold that thought and you be patient for just a little bit longer. Vicki's family has been one of the major forces driving this case. In fact, when Vicki disappeared, her brother, KC, confronted LeBron at his home. What KC found there was evidence of a possible murder scene. And now he's going to walk us through exactly what was discovered.
We are at the former home of LeBron Hollingsworth, who we're trying to prove killed his estranged wife, Vicki, in 1997. Yeah, all this stuff have changed on me here. LeBron's so. home is the first of three different crime scenes we're going to investigate today. You can see in the yard here where he swerved some kind of way and went straight back there. He run over. I know he did that. Immediately stuff? after Vicki's disappearance, her brother, Casey, did his own investigation and made some discoveries that would lead police to collect evidence that could help us build a timeline of what happened that morning. I could see why the tracks had come and you can see where he had sped around and hit the bush. The tire tracks led straight into the backyard through a badly damaged bush next to a shed. The tire tracks measured five feet, four inches from outside to outside, which is the same as Vicky's Mustang. So maybe our tire tracks come through from where you can see that concrete come around and come more this way. So now after that, I looked in there and I could tell somebody had been in there. I was so hysterical at that time. I, I really was in a rush then. I knew I had to find my sister. I feel like he wrapped her up or something. Cadaver dogs searching LeBron's house later led police directly to the shed, but no evidence of a body was found. You gotta realize at five o'clock in the morning though, this is pretty quiet and dark back here. The neighborhood canvas that morning, most people were asleep. Only LeBron's next door neighbor reported hearing Vicky's car at 5 a.m. But she also reported what sounded to her like an argument in LeBron's driveway. Unfortunately, she is now deceased. And while that will keep her statement out of the courtroom, it might still help us understand what happened that morning. Our theory based on the evidence is that the argument escalated in the driveway where LeBron possibly murdered Vicky. Then in an effort to hide her body, he put her in the car, drove the car back to the shed where he wrapped her body up, placed her back in the car, and drove away. Do y'all think the dump site comes after this? Yeah. So let's drive that, and you time it. Okay, I'll time it. Almost two years after Vicki disappeared, a homeowner living at the bottom of Billy Goat Hill found a skull in her backyard. Her dog had brought it home from the woods, and that's when a search for the rest of the body began. Cadaver dogs found Vicky's body in a ravine just off of a blind turn at the top of Billy Goat Hill, which was about five miles from LeBron's house. Tires all over here. Yeah, I wonder how long those tires have been down here. Look at all of them. Oh, God. They're everywhere. This is very secluded, especially at say 5.30 in the morning. Not a single car has passed this we the middle of the day. We Billy Goat Hill. Seems like it would be a perfect place for people to go and, and maybe do drugs, um, go and have sex. It's a good location just to be hidden away from people. How many feet down was it? 106. 106 feet, so 30 yards. It's far enough to be off the roadway that no one would notice her. Yeah. <clears throat> Police found Vicky's skeleton wrapped in trash bags with four tires placed on top of it. You can't dig in here. That's why he just placed her and put the tires over so no one would actually see her. Because the attempt to hide Vicky's body was so obvious, it doesn't hurt us that we don't know exactly how he killed Vicky. She sure didn't kill and conceal herself. But to show that LeBron could have hidden Vicky's body, we're going to have to show that he was familiar with Billy Goat Hill. So do you want to try to locate the general area? You're not walking through there. You don't? You're sure? It's a dump. It is a dump. It's, it's a dump. woodsy, it's covered, it's secluded, it's creepy. There ain't no cars here. It was dark. What a great spot. It's not as dumb as we thought. The last place we need to go is Vicky's house, which is less than four miles from Billy Goat Hill. This is where witnesses saw her car in the driveway between 8.30 and 9 a.m. in the morning. Now, this was pretty big property they had at the time. So the Mustang was parked in this single driveway right here? Yes. Is that where witnesses saw her Mustang parked at 9 in the morning? Yes. But well, he's in such a hurry, he didn't even pull the branch out of the back of the car. No. The branch lodged in Vicky's rear fender was proven to match the damaged bush in LeBron's yard. He may not even seen it. I don't think he ever it, saw it. Go back to the picture. It's kind of uh, in the weeds. In. It's, it's here, here, there's already grass right here. You're not even paying attention, probably. Uh-uh. Blends in, yeah. He probably just never even paid attention that it was there. So he would go to dump the body and on the way back lose the car here and then have three miles to get home? Yes. Yeah. Right. 
Driving the route our killer would have taken, a possible timeline for this murder is becoming clear. Vicky's at LeBron's house at 5 a.m. He kills her, wraps her up in the backyard, and can make it to Billy Goat Hill in about 15 minutes. He drops her body. He didn't even take the time to bury her. Drives 10 minutes to her house, parks the car, and potentially walks home. And it was so early, that would explain why no one saw him. You think, oh my gosh, can you really do all this in an hour? But I, I think you can. I do too. We've now established a probable timeline for Vicki's murder, but we still have a long way to go in proving our case. So the next thing we need to do is talk to Vicki's friends so they can give us a better understanding of her life around the time she went missing. Hey, hey how, are you doing? how are you, sir? I'm right. Kelly. Kelly. Thank you John for coming Carter. down here to see no us. Problem. Sergeant John Carter of the Chattanooga Police Department actually met Vicki years before her murder while responding to a burglary call at her apartment. The two were close friends before she got involved with LeBron. I hadn't heard from her for approximately about a year, and I pulled up on her at a gas station, and she had tattoos coming from both arms and cursive writing saying, I love my husband. She said, I am so scared of my husband. He's been just abusing me. I said, come on, we're going to get this order of protection or restraining order. You should be proud of yourself. She said, they said I couldn't have one. They said I didn't have any police reports. I didn't have any evidence. I didn't have any proof that he'd been beating on me. Not too long after this incident, Vicki separated from LeBron and again reached out to her friend, Sergeant Carter. She said, I'm going to be moving. She said, I also put in for a job. You and my dad and my mom are the only ones going to know me. Did you talk with her anymore after that? Yes, I did. I went by to see her. I showed up at the office. Vicki said, something strange happened today. I said, what's that? She said, see these roses? They came from my husband. She said, I am scared to death because he has no idea where I work at. How are you? Steve's been rolling. Vicki had just started a new job where Jan Pruitt was her supervisor. And on that Friday, before Vicki went missing, she told Jan that she was going to go to lunch with LeBron. Do you ever remember LeBron calling there looking for her or trying to speak to her? LeBron kept calling, kept calling, kept calling. So she decided she would go to lunch with him. Maybe that would get him off of her back. There were still some very obvious attempts by LeBron to continue that relationship, stalking type obsessive behavior. She went to lunch with him and when she came back, she had a, a 11 red roses from LeBron. Were they delivered? No, she, he gave them to her. And she told me that 11 roses was a sign of death. And she was really afraid of him. Have you ever heard 11 roses means death? I think buy a dozen and give one to another girl. <laughs> Between the roses and the constant calling, it's pretty clear that LeBron wanted to get back with Vicky, but she did not. So we need to find somebody we can speak to about the nature of their relationship just prior to Vicky going missing. Hello. How are you, man? What's up, buddy? What you doing? Adolphus Mitchell was friends with Vicky and even today remains close friends with LeBron. What are y'all working on now? We're still working on Vicky's case. He also owns a local restaurant where LeBron and Vicky were seen together the day before she disappeared. The weekend she got missing, he was arguing with her. Yeah. And I was there when he was arguing. I said, why are you arguing with her like this? Every girl he with, he tell him, if he can't have him, nobody will. If I had a dollar for every time I heard, if I can't have you, no one can, in a case of domestic violence, I'd be a rich lady. And if you hear that when you're sitting on a jury, it spells one thing to you, motive. And when she went missing, everybody knew he had did something to her. She actually said Brown would not let her go. He would kill her if she left. When's the last time you spoke to him? Two weeks ago. He said he's in Texas. He probably controlled a girl in Texas. Crazy ass Brown. He had a reputation of beating everybody he was with. With LeBron living in Texas, we're not going to be able to question him anytime soon. But after talking to Adolphus, I feel like we can learn a lot more about his MO by talking to all of the exes in his life. Come on in. Bill and Orlando are interviewing a lady named Karen. Yes, you Karen. Who happens to be the stepdaughter of a Chattanooga police sergeant. She also, though, is one of the exes in the life of LeBron. LeBron can be sweet, but he, you know, he would go outrageous. What sets him off? Anything that would make him jealous, I could see somebody walking up the street and he thinks I'm looking at a good guy. Ah, looking out the window while we're driving. Who, who you looking at? I didn't call the police a lot because I didn't want my dad name to keep coming up and me ruining opportunities for him. 
Here I am, the bad police child, getting in trouble. He keeps. I wouldn't get in trouble, but I was running with trouble. Karen was young at the time that they met, and she fell under his spell. At first, he was nice, and then he was abusive, and I'm so glad that she got away from the abusive relationship. Probably about eight years ago, my cousin had a cookout, and one of his friends shows up. Do you remember the, which friend? I don't know their name, but it's twin brothers, little short guys, no taller than me, and they're twins, identical twins. Anyway, one of them shows up. He hugged me almost in tears. He said, I'm so glad you got away from him. I feel so bad. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, Vicky was trying to get away from LeBron. He said, and LeBron started an argument with her, proceeded to choke her. Wow. She passed out. This is why we always have to talk to the exes. If this is true and there's an eyewitness, this could be huge. I said, how could you live with yourself? Who's she talking about? I don't know their name, but Corey Slaughter's mom was dating one of the twins. You're good. Can y'all tell what a great day this is? <laughs> I know LeBron somewhere right now with some woman beating her. I know he is. We need to talk to the rest of LeBron's exes if we can figure out if there's a pattern of abuse, but we also need to prioritize. If Karen is right about this twin, that could change everything. So we need to find out who he is and try and track him down. My grandma, mother in law was abusive. I thought that, what is life now? The deep-seated hate of women. Yeah. grew up thinking it is right and take sex from women. But that doesn't condone what he did. My name is Lazarus Mazengani. I did kill 11 women and rape 23. The Black Heart Diaries. Premieres Monday, January 19 on CI. Hey, Miss Slaughter. This is Sergeant Kilgore with the Chattanooga Police Department. How are you? I'm all right. Hey, Miss Slaughter, did you ever uh, date a guy that was a twin? Yes. What was his name? Oh, Lord. I can't even think of his name. We've learned there may be a man who witnessed Vicky's murder. He's a twin, and he dated a lady named Harriet Slaughter. Unfortunately, she can't remember his name. So we pulled photos of twins with criminal records to see if LeBron's ex-wife, Karen, can give us a possible ID. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple pictures, okay? Okay. No, that's not them. Their eyes were light, and they're probably no taller than 5'3", oh, 5'4". Really? The neighborhood knew them for working on cars all the time. With no matches so far, Chattanooga Police Sergeant Justin Kilgore and Steve are going to check around LeBron's old neighborhood to see if they can find out who these twins might be. Let's go see if we can find y'all lived around here for a long time? Yeah. You know a couple of twins that used to hang around? Oh. If you see him, tell me. I just want to holler for a few minutes. Beware of the dog, Dave. That's all right. I'm Italian, so I, I'm not that good sweet meat like you. <laughs> we are looking for two five-foot-four-inch twins who fix cars on the street. You wouldn't think it would be that hard. Hey, hold on just a second. Welcome to the back. Yeah, I'm talking about okay. You tell me what okay she's talking about, and I'll tell you. <laughs> Vicky? Yeah. Vicky. What do you know about Vicky? Uh-huh. Yeah. You on the right track. Will you sit down in my car and talk to me? Uh -huh. Well, what did you know about Bronny and Vicky? If you want to know anything about Bronny, go to Waterboy. Yeah. He can tell you anything you want to know. Yeah. Waterboy, what is it? Flunky. Tommy Vaughn, which is Waterboy. That's what they called him because he's basically a do boy for LeBron. Did Waterboy ever tell you about what happened to Vicky? He didn't tell me, but he hollered out to see Bernie jumped on him. Waterboy right yeah. in the street. So when Bernie pulled off, Waterboy hollered out. He said, Yeah, I'm going to tell them white people what you did to Vicky ass. But yeah. Waterboy, he, that's your key right there. When Waterboy was originally interviewed back in 97, it didn't appear that he may have been involved. I can honestly say, I do not know where Vicky is, and as far as any harm coming to her, I don't yeah. know that either. But now that we have some new information, it's very important to talk to Waterboy. 
Do you know two twins that used to run around with LeBron? LeBron and Doll? Hey, describe them for me. Uh, yeah, they short, brown skin, they call this hill mechanic name of a day. <laughs> and what was their names? It got to be Ron and Doll and them only two twins. Well, I think automatically this has to be the guys. So let's send out an email to all the officers in the apartment and see if they can identify them. I've got a Donald and Connell Moreland. They both worked on cars. And how tall are they? 5'4". Can you find a picture of them? I've got pictures right now. Nice. All right, I'm going to show you two pictures. So just look at them for me. That's them. It is? Cool. All right. Miss Slaughter? Yes. Let me give you these two names and see if they ring a bell. Connell or Donnell? That's it. That's it. Which one did you date? Connell. Connell with a C. Uh-huh. I call Sergeant Phillips and I explain to him, this is Connell that we're the one we're looking for. Can you and Orlando go and find Connell and see what you can come up with? Connell? Hey, how, how are you, sir? Come out and talk to us. Y'all think you need to get No, 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 no. We're no. doing that, you'd already been handcuffed. All right. I, I supervise a homicide unit, okay? Oh, my God. Now, you ain't killed nobody, right? No, I ain't killed nobody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I want to make sure. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. You know LeBron Hollingsworth? I know the name, but I can't put a picture with the name. He's the one in the middle right there. Oh, my God. Yes, yes, yes. Remember him? Yes. I remember him. The day that girl got missing, I was working on his car. She was dressed up in the dress and everything. And they said they were going to go out to eat. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? I didn't see that girl no more after that day. And she left with him. He killed that girl, y'all. You feel me? He killed that girl. He killed that girl. What makes you think he killed her? One thing I know, he had a bad evil temper. I know that. But something that was told to us was you were with LeBron when he rolled her up in something. No. Uh -uh. And not, okay, that, so not that you killed her. Yeah. No, but... I didn't. I told y'all. Him and her left together. I was still living, working on the car. Okay. Well, Waterboy was the one that they say they rolled that girl up. Waterboy. Connell seems very forthright with his version of the events and this rumor that's being passed around, but in court, rumors aren't admissible. She didn't deserve to be dead. Mm -hmm. He didn't want her to be dead. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Sadly, Connell wasn't the star witness we hoped he would be, but now we have new information to use when we question LeBron's friend, mm -hmm. Waterboy. It's time to find out what he really knows. So you think Tommy's going to change his story or stick with it? Justin and Steve are on the way to the home of Tommy Waterboy Vaughn, who could be a huge lead in this case. If we can get him to talk, Waterboy could be witness number one. Let's see if he remembers anything now after 15, 16 years. Plus, he's had a couple of strokes. I don't know how his health is going to be. Tommy! Hi. Hello. Tommy, how are you doing? Sounds like you've been having some serious health issues. When I see Waterboy, I'm a little let down because I realize He's pretty bad all health-wise. What all kind of medical issues you having now? Do do what? I don't talk about Vicky. You remember that one, don't you? Yeah. What all you remember about it? Not much. I, I know it might be hard to remember. It was 16 years ago, but I think that y'all were close enough that he told you something, and you don't really want to tell it. And now is the time. No matter how close you are to him no matter how scared you might be of them, right now is the time to talk about it. Why do you think that everybody would say, if anybody knows what happened to Vicky, LeBron would have told Waterboy? Oh, All right. Waterboy is extremely ill, um, hard to understand. I don't think he has long to live. Tommy, get feeling better, okay, man? His memory is clearly affected by the stroke and the medical treatment he's undergoing right now. Or that, uh, Tommy, I don't think he knows what time of day it is. Now. I don't think so either. Is he that bad off? Yeah, uh, he's pretty bad off. I think whatever is locked in his mind is locked there forever. 
With Waterboy a complete dead end, we need another way to establish LeBron is the murderer in this case. One way to do that is to show that LeBron had an MO so violent and so consistent that this could have led to murder. If you just sit right over there, please. So we're hoping that his other exes are going to be willing to talk about that alleged abuse. So when did you meet LeBron? I've been knowing LeBron for a while, and then it was off and on. And then we finally really got together, we got married. Nicole is actually the only ex of LeBron who filed a police report against him back in 2007. After we got married, we ended up fighting. He got real mad. I said, you're sleeping with this person and ended up smacking, well, not smacking me, hitting me upside my head, driving off with my head pushed down in the seat. He said, if you lift up, I will cut you. Wow. If you get out this car, I will kill you. There's a certain process that they all go through. They meet LeBron and he's very charming. Once he gets them to fall in love with him, LeBron shows his nasty side. He's obsessive control freaky ass self. How long were you with him? Um, about a year. Probably around maybe 2000. Well, why did you guys uh, stop? He was very jealous. Everybody's a little jealous. No, what do you mean not, not the jealous. normal human amount that rational person would have. A very nice girl. They all are. They're sweet. They're pretty. They're smart. I mean, we had a few incidents where he like, woke me up. So tell me some of the stuff that he would do. He choked me, uh, but I don't remember why. He was talking and I couldn't hear him because I was like almost... You know, I guess I almost passed out. Now this is what we need. These women might have been abused by LeBron individually, but when you put them all together, they're forming a beautiful MO of the way LeBron commits his acts of violence. Okay, so you guys are arguing in the car? Were you trying to break it off with him? And this I've been break, trying to break it off for the longest, me. Sandra was dating LeBron seven years before Vicky, but she could have some powerful perspective on how far back in time he was violent. He took me to a bridge and pulled me on my legs, hanging me over, saying, uh, do you want to be a good girl? Do you want to come home? Or do you want to, or do you just want to die? Jeez. And I said, no, I love you. I was just joking. Please pull me back. I'm not going nowhere. Then toss me back up. He said, you feel better now? But your decision said, yeah, I'm not going nowhere. I'll stay with you. He drove me up to Billy Goat Hill. And he says Billy Goat Hill? That's how you knew the Yes, name? yes. It was a nightmare because I've never been in those woods like that. Oh, my God, that's beautiful. I didn't want to have nothing with him. And then he was just smacking me around. I was a rag doll, but I didn't care. Mm. I just wanted to survive and get the hell out of there. Do you know why he would choose Billy Goat Hill? I think he likes places where nobody see you or see him doing what he's doing to you. Sweet. This is strong proof that LeBron knew about Billy Goat Hill. And now we can connect him directly to that location and to the concealment of Vicki's body. This will take care of any statute of limitations issue, and we now have the ability to indict him for second degree murder, addressing concealment, or for first degree. This case is not just about making it nice and pretty to present to a jury. This case is about saving a life, because if LeBron Hollingsworth loses his temper one more time, who knows what could happen to the next girl. Bill Phillips, what's up? Okay. So we spoke with you last on Friday evening, right? Right. Okay. Neil Pinkston, the executive assistant DA, asked us to help him figure out the four things that he wanted before presenting the case to a grand jury. We knew that Vicki would go pick LeBron up at 5 a.m. First, we can now present a plausible timeline for how the murder happened. We know that Vicki's car went into LeBron's backyard, and there were obvious tire tracks. The tire tracks measured the same as the Mustang. Our theory is that they argued he killed her. I could tell somebody had been in there. I feel like he wrapped her up. He then went to Billy Goat Hill to hide her body. This is very secluded. Not a single car has passed us the whole time we've been here. After dumping Vicky's body, LeBron would have parked her car at her parents' house. You got a tree stuck in the back bumper that came out of LeBron's backyard. And potentially walked the three miles home. Can you really do all this in an hour? I think you can. Next, we established motive for Vicky's murder. Every girl he with, he tell if he can't have nobody with. The fact of the 
If I can't have you, no one will. That's pretty important, I think. Then we talked to LeBron's ex-wives and girlfriends, and that revealed an abusive M.O. It could have led to murder. If you get out this car, I will kill you. You choked me. I almost passed out. And finally, Sandra revealed that he had taken her to Billy Goat Hill as well. It was a nightmare because I've never been in those woods like that. Excellent, though. Puts him in. His familiarity with where Vicky's found. And that's it. Everything's done. Circumstantially, I think we stand pretty solid. This is a really strong circumstantial case. Sadly, what you have here is a woman who was trying to get away, mm -hmm. but still too nice to completely get out of his life. It's got to be first degree murder and abuse of a corpse, correct? Right. I, there, I don't have really any question in my mind. It's pretty overwhelming if you think of it all really of it. Is. Oh, nice. Yay. Nice, 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 nice. Is there any way that we could draw up an indictment first thing tomorrow afternoon? I'll make sure. I don't see why we could. Neil is a prosecutor after my own heart. He will make a decision and he will take action. If he gets this case indicted, this will be the quickest turnaround I have ever seen. We're going to be on a plane to Texas to arrest LeBron Hollingsworth. Way to go. You guys in about a half a mile, you're going to make a left on 3rd Street. Here's our street. We are so excited to learn that a Tennessee grand jury has indicted LeBron for first-degree murder, even more than we anticipated. We have the arrest warrant in hand, but now we need to find LeBron to actuate the arrest. Oh, there it is, that white truck. I see into it here. It looks like, oh, it's a, it's a white one. Last activity at 0922 hours. OK. All right, good luck. Call yeah. when ready. <laughs> All right, hold on. They're walking, they went to the back. Let's do this. Yeah, I'm going to. Hi, Josh, big cast. That's it. Yeah, he's in cast. Oh, yeah, they got him. It feels so good to be involved in seeing LeBron Hollingsworth arrested for what he's done. Yeah, I'll walk out of the car with okay. you. And know that he's going to spend, hopefully, the rest of his life in prison. But back toward that door, oh, you're going to get a whole lot easier. How's it going? All right, LeBron. How are you? Good, you. Yeah. All right. You were not just being arrested, but you were indicted by a grand jury for first degree murder. First degree murder. And it is in reference to Vicky. That's Wow. <laughs> Unreal. Oh, well, here we go. LeBron is just as cold and unfeeling about this indictment as he was about the time Vicky went missing. But now that LeBron is in custody, none of that matters. You like a high five on this one. This is a good one. I know, right? It's time to tell Vicky's family the news they have been waiting for for 16 years. Well, we are relieved and excited to tell y'all that yesterday a grand jury indicted LeBron Hollingsworth for the murder of Vicky. Good. And he has been arrested. That's the best news I've heard in years. Let me hug you I appreciate you so I much. Know. It's been a prize. See, I don't even have to think anymore when, where, how they gonna get this man. I thank you, Chattanooga Police Department, for all you've done. And right now, I can, even there, I see a smile. You've been That's waiting a while, huh? A long time. And it's the best news for her birthday. Her birthday's coming up. It's the Sunday. 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 The 26th. Sunday. Mm -hmm. What you thinking, Wesley? I don't know how to respond. It's relief. Everybody that we talked to was excited to hear that the case was being worked on, and they all said wonderful things about your mom. That makes my heart smile, knowing that people are still concerned and, you know, did not forget. I think she's smiling right now. I think she's smiling. I think uh, the Lord has made it possible for something to happen. What's done in the dark will come to light, and we want to thank you for it. You're very welcome. It was wonderful meeting all of y'all.
I don't think there's a more satisfying feeling as a prosecutor to be able to tell a family that you have been able to accomplish an arrest like this. Not only has it been 16 years with Vicki's family waiting for the answers, but it's been 16 years of him walking the earth abusing even more women. And it's a wonderful feeling to know that now it's all come to an end. All right, you guys, you take care. All right, thank you. Oh, yeah. You don't have to work in one day anymore. Can sleep at night now. Yeah. Exactly. I can be relieved. Right. And that's what we've been waiting for.